Hi, in this video we're going to learn to graph parametric equations on the TI-84. And the TI-84 has the ability to graph functions, it can graph polar form, it can graph in parametric form. So to do that, the first thing we want to do is we want to set the mode to parametric. And you'll see that mine, and most probably likely that yours is on function, and so we'll arrow down to parametric and right arrow there and even though it is it looks like it's selected we must press enter to change the mode to parametric so now when I hit the y equals key which is where we input our functions typically we see something very different than what we're used to here we have the x you know the function x of t the function y of t um, and so each of these are based on the parameter time and what we want to do is we're going to enter in the parametric equations for the following baseball problem. So suppose a baseball is hit at 110 feet per second at an angle of 40 degrees from the horizontal and from an initial height of 3 feet above the plate. Will the baseball, uh, will that be a home run baseball over the, gray, the green monster in Fenway, which is located some 312 feet from the plate, and is at a height of 32.2 feet above the ground. Well, neglecting error resistance and so on, we'll be able to investigate with the polar form or the parametric form of the function. So the parametric form in the x direction is given by 110, the initial velocity, cosine of our 40 degree angle. And by the way, it should be in degree mode. If not in degree mode, we can fix that a little bit later. Times t, and if I just click on t, so that would be our parametric function in the x direction, and this would be our projectile motion function in the y direction. We'll have negative 16 t squared plus 110 sine 40. T plus 3. So this is known as the parametric equation in the up and down or in the y direction, which accounts for gravity, and that is the negative 16 t squared part of this. The initial velocity in the y direction is a component of the velocity, initial velocity vector and is the 110 sine of 40 times the t, and then the 3 feet above the plate. So when we were talking, um, we're ready then to set our window. And when we press window, things change a bit also. And the reason for that is it also has our, our time values in there. So what I'd like to do is start with a time of zero and go up to a time of five. And let's make the t-step 0 0.05. Now our x minimum is when the ball's at the plate, the x min is zero. And at Fenway, we said that the uh, the green monster is around 312. Well, it, it ranges from 310 to 315 feet. To be on the safe side, we're going to go, let's just put 350 feet down in the x direction. And we'll put the scale as uh, 40 feet. And then our y min, well, it's going to really start at 3 feet above the plate, but let's just put the y min at 0 so we can see the x so we can see the axes. And our y maximum, let's put that at 80 feet, and we'll make that a scale of 10. So we're ready then to graph this, and when we graph it, what we have come to know or expect doesn't happen. And the reason for that is that our mode is in radians and the 40 radians would be a very different value than 40 degrees. So I need to change my mode again to degrees. And when I press graph now, it'll look a little bit different. Okay, that's a pretty good picture. Let's adjust our window to get that peak there. And so it looks like my y min might need to be as high as 100, or something over 80 because it cut off just the very top there. And that's a pretty good picture of the path of the baseball. 
Okay, so what we're interested now is how do we how do we interpret this? First of all, in parametric mode, as we trace through various values of t, we're going to see how high the baseball is above the ground and how far from home plate horizontally the ball is. So let's trace. In our first value, you can see that at time zero, right at the moment of impact, the ball is three feet above the plate, but right over the plate in terms of the x or horizontal dimension. So we're going to go ahead and let's trace to one. One second later, the ball now is 84.26 feet from home plate in this direction and 57.7 feet up in the air. And I can continue to trace either by right arrowing, which that's where the trace step of 0.05 comes in. And you'll see that as the baseball's moving, I have its x is how far it is away from the plate, and its y is how high it is above, about, above the ground, actually. And so what we're interested in knowing is what happens a little bit later. So when does it reach its maximum height? And what is that maximum height? Well, it looks to be that it's going to reach it about 2.2 seconds later because now it's on. Now, it, when I right click the next time, it's, on, it's gone down just a little bit. So, around 2.2 seconds is my estimate of when it reaches its maximum height. And its maximum height seems to be around 81.1 feet above the ground. All right, to do that analytically, we just need to find the vertex of this parabola, or better yet, because we're talking about how high it is and how long it takes to get to that height, we can actually use our y component, our y, uh, what did we say, the, the projectile motion function in the y direction and look at its derivative to find what value of time maximizes the height. But what we're interested in now is will it, will, how will it do in comparison to the green monster at 312 horizontal feet away and at 32.2 vertical feet above the ground. So if you look at the lower left of the screen, I'm at 307.56 feet away from home plate at 3.65 seconds after the ball was hit, and I'm at 47 feet high. I'm going to right click again, and we're at 311.78, 3.7 seconds after the baseball was hit, and it looks like with one more click, I'm still over 32.2 feet high, and I'm past the wall. And so, yes, this baseball would be a home run. So that's how we can graph a parametric, a set of parametric equations that are both parameterized in, in terms of time t. This doesn't really have the ability to graph. I mean, you can graph it dependent on any. You can just call t the, the independent variable. And both x of t and y of t are dependent variables with respect to that. And that's called parameterizing. That's why we call those parametric equations. So this concludes this um, instructional video on graphing parametric equations.